Ameloblastoma is classified under the epithelial group in classification of odontogenic tumors, which means that the epithelial component is neoplastic, whereas the connective tissue is only a supportive component. Six histopathological subtypes of ameloblastoma are recognized depending on the pattern and features of this neoplastic epithelial component. Follicular, plexiform, acanthomatous, granular, basal cell and desmoplastic. A lesion usually shows a mixture of these subtypes and the tumor is classified according to the predominant pattern that is present. Among these six subtypes, the follicular type or sometimes called as the simple type of ameloblastoma is the most common type and also has the highest rate of recurrence. The neoplastic epithelial component proliferates as disconnected islands, strands and cords of varying sizes. The connective tissue is fibrous and is only supportive to the neoplastic epithelial component. In high power magnification, the epithelial islands are composed of two types of cells peripheral cells and the central cells. The peripheral cells are tall columnar, they have round hyperchromatic nuclei. The nuclei of the cells are located away from the base membrane referred to as reversed polarity, giving them a palisaded pattern. Small clear vacuoles can be seen between the nucleus and the base membrane. These characteristic features of the peripheral cells are known as the Vickers and Gordon criteria. These cells strongly resemble the pre-ameloblasts or the inner enamel epithelium in the enamel organ of a developing tooth germ. The central mass of these epithelial islands is formed by polyhedral loosely arranged cells, which resemble the stellate reticulum of enamel organ. Cyst formation due to degeneration of these stellate reticulum like cells is relatively common in follicular type of ameloblastoma. Due to these intrafollicular cysts, the term multicystic ameloblastoma was used earlier, but not anymore as it created confusion with unicystic ameloblastoma. Focally in many ameloblastomas, the collagenous fibrous connective tissue stroma may show a zone of hyalinization of collagen immediately adjacent to the tumor islands. Fibroblasts are almost totally absent within this zone. This hyalinization is due to the inductive effect of the epithelial component. It is theorized that the ameloblastic tumor cells, in an attempt to complete their embryologic function to produce enamel, signals the connective tissue to induce dentine formation. However, the fibroblastic cells in the connective tissue are unable to differentiate into odontoblasts and are thus able to show only hyalinization. The second histological type of ameloblastoma is the plexiform ameloblastoma. Here, the tumor cells are arranged in a network of interconnecting strands. Each of these strands has a peripheral layer of columnar cells and stellate reticulum like cells in the center. Sometimes double rows of peripheral cells are lined up back to back. The central cells are much less prominent in plexiform type than in the follicular type. In plexiform type, the cystic degeneration may be seen in the connective tissue and not in the stellate reticulum. Third type of ameloblastoma is the acanthomatous ameloblastoma, in which the stellate reticulum like cells undergo squamous metaplasia. Metaplasia is when one type of cell transforms into a different type of cell. Now squamous cells having the property to produce keratin may form keratin pearls within the tumor islands. Acanthomatous ameloblastoma is more commonly seen in the peripheral or extraosseous ameloblastoma. The fourth type is the granular ameloblastoma. As the name suggests, the cytoplasm of the epithelial component appears granular and eosinophilic. Both central cells and peripheral cells of the tumor islands show these granules. Studies have shown that these granules are actually lysosomes. The fifth type the basal cell ameloblastoma shows epithelial tumor islands having considerable resemblance to the tumor islands of basal cell carcinoma of the skin. The tumor cells have a basaloid appearance that is scanty cytoplasm and a large basophilic nucleus. They are similar to the cells of stratum basale of surface epithelium. It is believed that 
This is the rarest histological subtype of ameloblastoma. The sixth type is the desmoplastic ameloblastoma. In this type, the epithelial component has a tendency to grow in thin strands and cords. These bizarre configurations are sometimes called as animal-like. The central cells are often scant and the cells making up the periphery are flattened or cured. Reverse polarity of nuclei and subnuclear vacuole formation may be difficult to identify. Interestingly, this is the only subtype of ameloblastoma where the name is describing the connective tissue of the tumor and not the neoplastic epithelial islands. The word desmoplasia means growth of a very dense fibrous connective tissue which is hypocellular and hyalinized. It is theorized that it is this dense stroma which compresses or squeezes the epithelial islands into their bizarre shapes. Without the classic features, the diagnosis of desmoplastic ameloblastoma can be difficult. Moreover, this is the only ameloblastoma subtype which shows metaplastic bone formation. Due to these variations, in 2005, desmoplastic ameloblastoma was classified as a different entity altogether. But now in 2017, it has been replaced as a histological subtype of ameloblastoma. Coming to the treatment, ameloblastomas are treated surgically. Even though ameloblastoma is a benign tumor, it is aggressive in behavior and grows invasively into the bone marrow. Simple enucleation frequently causes recurrence. In-block resection is frequently done as it limits any tumor islands being left behind. This is done by removing a rim of uninvolved bone but maintaining the continuity of the jaw. About 1 to 2 cm margin beyond radiographic limit of the lesion is considered minimum margin of resection. Segmental resection is also common which means removal of a segment of maxilla or mandible without maintaining the continuity of bone. It can extend up to hemimaxillectomy or hemimandibulectomy if the lesion is very large. This treatment protocol has least chance of recurrence.